Hello, and welcome to the Rainbow Review, where we tell you what's new with the LGBTQ. I'm your host, Ramin. And I'm Trevor. Let's get started, shall we? In disturbing news, President Trump has once again come out in favor of another anti-LGBT Republican candidate. Uh, this time it's uh, Senator Roy Moore, uh, who is competing for a seat in the now vacant, uh, now vacant Alabama Senate, and who has, let's say, a checkered past and be generous. Uh, this senator, who's replaced Attorney General Jeff Sessions, will be replacing that vacant seat, has come on uh, the radio, a far-right Christian radio station, hosted by a local Alabama radio host, Kevin Swanson. And in that interview, Swanson said that gays should be stoned to death. Uh, Moore did not necessarily comment during, the, during that interview as to his personal stance on whether or not gays should be put to death. Nevertheless, he did dodge the question during the interview, and when follow-up inter when follow-up uh, interviewers questioned him as to whether he thinks gay people should be d denied their rights or be killed, he once again artfully dodged the question. Uh, President Trump has come under fire for supporting this candidate once again because he has been an outspoken advocate against the homosexual community, thinks that personally believes that it should homosexuality itself should be illegal, and among other things that Muslims should be banned from serving in Congress. Uh, when President Trump was interviewed about his thoughts on the subject, he once again dodged the question by saying that, you know, vague platitudes that the pre that the senator was fighting a good campaign and that no matter what he would fight for more, and that he would support Roy next week, and they would have a talk with him about a lot of different things. Uh, presumably, more homophobic jokes will be told at the people public's expense. The New Yorker recently published an article titled "The Danger of M President Pence." This is a profile of current Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, sources told The New Yorker that Trump teases Pence about his views on religion, abortion, and the LGBT community. President Trump likes to let Mike Pence, quote, know who's boss, and that Trump also asked people who stopped by Pence's office, quote, did Mike make you pray, unquote. After a legal advisor told Pence and Trump that many states would probably legalize abortion, if the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Trump has said, was said to have turned to Pence and said, quote, you see, you've wasted all this time and energy on it, and it's not going to end abortion anyway, unquote. When this to the topic shifted to gay rights, Trump pointed to Pence and joked, quote, don't ask that guy, he wants to hang them all, unquote. Mike Pence was previously the, in, the governor of Indiana, and while there he signed the state's Religious Freedom Restoration Act in 2015. Uh, this gave businesses the right to refuse to serve gay people. He has also supported gay conversion therapy and has been called one of the most anti-LGBT politicians. At Cleveland State University, far-right students, activists, put out uh, posters all over their campus that were filled with homophobic, violent, and threatening information, and, filled, and generally carried a tone of gross homophobia against the entire LGBT community. The posters themselves, which were quite inflammatory and controversial, started with the giant headline, Follow Your Fellow Faggots. Uh, the poster then went on to have uh, several statistics showing up, that, such as that 34% of trans people attempt suicide, 30% of suicides are LGBT related, and that over 40% of bisexual people consider suicide as an option. Uh, an image on the poster, which you will see here, uh, also showed a hanged per silhouetted person. Uh, the university professor said that although he condemned the, uh, condemned the poster and its overall message, that ultimately it was within the school's best interest to support the idea of free speech. Uh, next to these, next to, among other fo fl flyers that were on the com campus boards were uh, far-right national images showing white people saying that we too have a right to exist. 24 hours later, the, the campus professor came under fire again for defending the poster, and this time came out saying that he had, sw had since switched his stance 
and that it was irreprehensible and that the school does not support homophobia nor does it support any kind of discrimination against race, gender, creed, color, sexual orientation, or gender identity. In Cincinnati, Reverend David Meredith may be fired from his job because of his same-sex marriage. Last year, he married his partner of 30 years, and after this, he, he started receiving complaints as well as his church about this. Some churchgoers have even called on him to resign from his post following the nuptials. There will be a hearing held by the church, church's investigation committee to determine what will happen next. However, his own congregation actually supports him, uh, and one churchgoer said, quote, he has, brought, he has brought people who would never set foot in a church into this community of faith, unquote. David has said that he has, quote, been doing God's work, unquote, for 30 years and has been a pastor at the church for six, saying as well, quote, the problem that others have is that I will not be quiet, that I will not hide the witness of Christ in this gay man's life and in lo my loving relationship with my husband, unquote. A United Methodist Church bis bishop has been quoted as saying, there are continuing efforts to re reach a just resolution, unquote. Coming out of the UK, after 40 years of spreading homophobia and very racist messages, Kevin Wilshaw, a, leader, a former leader of the National Front, which is a literal far-right neo-Nazi organization, has come out as openly gay and Jewish and has renounced ties to the former National Front Party uh, group which he was affiliated with. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Wilshaw, uh, Wilshaw released a statement condemning the movement and say, condemning hatred and his former affiliations to the group entirely, as well as coming out as being openly gay and openly Jewish. Uh, he said that he had also faced discrimination in the past and that it was never right and that we should stand against it in any and all forms. However, he did come under some scrutiny from more, uh, more uh, cynical members of the press by saying that he's come out at this point in time only after facing discrimination himself within the boundaries of his far-right organization because he was also suspected of being gay. However, I think that's a moot point and anyone who comes out against white nationalism, racism, and homophobia should be, you know, rewarded for their efforts. One of the surviving members of the recent gay purge in Chechnya came out to a news organization and described in full detail some of the horrible, horrific events that he was subjected to and what exactly has been going on in Chechnya. Uh, the young man, Maxim uh, Lapunov, uh, to told, a Moscow, told a Moscow press organization what exactly happened during the 12 days in which he was forced in, to spend in a blood-soaked cell, stating that they burst in every 10 to 15 minutes, shouting that because I was gay, they were going to kill me, and that every day they threatened to kill me, and he believed it. They, th they went on to torture him actively by beating him with sticks, beating him in the ribs, the legs, the buttocks, the back, and every time he lost consciousness and started to fall over, they would pick him back up and resume the beatings. Every day that he was told that he was going to be killed and that there were no attempts whatsoever to being made to come and rescue him. And he was pressured into giving up information on other members of the gay community. Uh, Igor, Klapinit, Igor Kalampin of the, community, com, of the Committee for Preventative Torture said that um, on the European continent, nobody has tried to destroy a people based on their sexual orientation since the times of Nazi Germany. And that, and that the tragedy that's going on right now in Chechnya is reminiscent of those times and, the, the being, and is openly being supported by members of the Chechnyan, by, by the leader of the Chechnyan government. So we have more details on the tragic events going on. In Indonesia, a bill has been introduced that would ban all LGBTI behavior, as it calls it, from television. It doesn't give much detail on what these behaviors would be, but this is a similar ban that was introduced in Egypt a while back. Uh, the ban would include 
uh, explicitly gay characters, traditional or comedic shows with men dressed as women or effeminate men. One MP, Hanenfi Riss, said LGBT behavior, LGBT is abnormality and would only be allowed on TV if it was fixing it. Jakarta-based Andres Harsano, is the leading at, who is the leading advocate with the Human Rights Watch, told the Gay Star News that the campaign to remove LGBT content from TV started last year. It then grew from there to remove LGBT, oh, excuse me. It then moved, grew from there and forbade portraying LGBT people as normal. Then it grew again, this time banning the broadcast of effeminate men. The HRW had repeatedly asked the Indonesian lawmakers to reverse this decision. It also called on the government to not move forward on the new bill. But we'll keep an eye on that. A recent news poll shows that up to an overwhelming majority of Australians are coming out in support of same-sex marriage. In the ongoing postal survey, up to 59% of the population supports the, supports the idea of gay marriage, as opposed to only 38%, as released by The Guardian. Uh, the polls also state that by the, time the November, by the time the postal survey will come to a conclusion on November the 7th, an overwhelming two-thirds of majority of Australians will have come out in support of gay marriage. If they vote yes, then, then the Australian Labour Labor Caucus hopes to urge the urge the, the urge the politicians in order to proceed with l the legal process of making gay marriage legal. And as soon as that happens, and that will happen as soon as the Australian Board of Statistics will release the results come mid-November. Uh, the polls also state that 65% of people have already voted, and yet there's still 19% who have stated they are planning, definitely planning on voting, and 6% saying that they will probably vote. But by the time this comes to a conclusion by mid by by mid November, it could be as early, it could be as soon as a week as Australia has gay marriage. So let's all cross our fingers and hope the politicians get off their butts. <laughs> Here in California, Governor Jerry Brown has officially signed into, a, into law the recognition of a third gender in the state. <clears throat> the option would be non-binary. Uh, this option will soon be, ish, be available on state-issued identification documents such as driver's license and birth certificates. This would also make it easier to process legal gender changes of any kind by removing the previous requirements. For, for like a doctor's statement or to appear in court. Senator Tony Adkins, a Democrat from San Diego who co-authored the bill uh, in a statement said, quote, the Gender Recognition Act will eliminate unnecessary stress and anxiety for many Californians and it exemplifies the leadership role that our state continues to take in LGBTQ civil rights, unquote. So that's great news here in California. This week, to, uh, Prime Minister of the UK, Theresa May, became the first openly serving Prime Minister to make a personal appearance at the Pink News Awards, which was also attended by um, La Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn and the, May and the Mayor of Britain, Sadiq Khan. Uh, Theresa May, <clears throat> in, the past has, in the past, was an opponent of same-sex marriage, but has since switched her position and has come out as an open supporter of the LGBT community and an advocate for gay marriage in all parts of the United Kingdom. Uh, she also came out saying that we need sex education, that th sex education taught in schools about LGBT issues in order to eradicate transphobia and homophobia, and that trans people and, and gay people and basically all members of the spectrum should not be discriminated against, there should not be bullying in our schools, and that we have to do our best to eradicate homophobia and transphobic bullying from our schools. And that <clears throat> she has also, she also stated, Britain has been looking back on our sad chapter during the past 50 years of the country's progress, referring to the various homophobic laws that were put in place, 
and stated that the country needed to move forward and make a more active attempt in order to make the lives of gay people better in all of the UK. Furthermore, she came out in support of supporting gay marriage in Northern Ireland, uh, which, although part of the UK, has had some issues in the past. Furthermore, she went on to state that the, we are implementing a world-leading blood donation policy for gay and bisexual men, and that the UK is, wants to move forward in allowing gay people and trans people and bi people to donate blood actively in the country. Basically, she touched on every single issue that is facing the gay world <laughs> right now in Britain and has vowed to become an ally on these, these topics. She also stated that this marks the country's 50th anniversary and gives us a, a parliament and the government a chance to act, uh, to act against homophobic practices and to look back and reflect on Britain's past in the, regarding that issue. Uh, she did come, um, she has earlier come under some scrutiny because she, part, she and her party uh, made a deal with the Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party, whose leadership is strongly opposed to LGBT equality, but Theresa May did come out stating that gay marriage should be legal in Ireland, is legal in Ireland, and that these people in Northern Ireland do need support from government. And it is Parliament's duty to act in favor of gay people across the UK. In U.S. schools, Spirit Day is used to stand up to LGBTQ bullying. And this Spirit Day, which was October 19th, Kellogg's, the Kellogg's Company and the LGBT charity group GLAAD joined together and launched a video featuring some of the Kellogg's Company's favorite mascots. These include Tony the Tiger, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Julius Pringles, Ernie Keebler, Toucan Sam, and Cornelius. And these mascots held up signs, such as in the movie Love Actually, and they made jokes based on their appearance, as well as made statements uh, supporting the LGBT community and uh, being against their bull being bullied. Uh, you can go find this, the full video online at the Kellogg's Company YouTube channel. And the, I'll just read the last line. The last line reads, quote, and no matter how you look, where you're from, or who you love, we must all stand together, join us in speaking out against bullying, unquote. And on the website, it says, quote, Spirit Day is a means to, of speaking out against LGBTQ bullying and standing with LGBTQ youth who disproportionately face bullying and harass harassment because of their identities. Kellogg's has received criticism from anti-gay groups for putting their Tony the Tiger mascot on a Pride advert, as well as for sponsoring the recent Atlanta Pride March, where they took out a prominent ad featuring the iconic tiger in the event's Pride Guide. They also, the American Family Association has also called for a boycott of the Kellogg's company. Last year, Kellogg's hosted a special Spirit Day breakfast. This was held at the Kellogg's New York City Cafe in Times Square and invited, they invited guests to start their Spirit Day with the official Spirit Day Bowl. Sarah K. Ellis, the GLAAD CEO and president, has, is quoted as saying, quote, Spirit Day is a vital initiative that highlights the serious issue of bullying and its di disproportionate impact on LGBTQ youth. It also sends powerful messages of support letting LGBTQ and other marginalized youth know that they are not alone. Something sorely needed. According to the GLSEN's most recent National School Climate Survey, 57.6% of LGBTQ students felt unsafe at their schools because of their sexual orientation, and 43.3% because of their gender expression. The GLSEN also reported that 85.2% of LGBTQ students experienced verbal harassment at, at schools based on personal characteristics. So what you're saying, Trevor, is that the American Family Association is telling parents to boycott the Kellogg's company in the name of family values? Yes. Oh, that's... According to them. Oh, I'm sure that's not going to 
cause any tension in families whatsoever. Telling kids they can't have their favorite cereal because Tony the Tiger doesn't hate gay people. All right, and here's Susan with an interview. <clears throat> Thank you. Tonight I'm here with Jess Magallanes, who is a staff psychologist mm -hmm. and training coordinator at You Matter at Chico State. So welcome. Glad to have you here today. Good to be here. Okay, well, so let's just go right into it. Uh, why don't you tell me about You Matter? So You Matter is the outreach branch of the Counseling Center. Um, we are made up of, or the You Matter program is made up of undergraduate interns. Um, and the goal of You Matter is really to bring awareness around mental health concerns to the students on campus. Um, the goal of doing that is that if we can bring mental health awareness, we can reduce stigma um, and minimize the barriers to mental health and wellness. And so again, you say you're the outreach yeah. Section. Yes. Of the so, our, so our interns go out and do campus events. Um, they do tabling events that um, talk about different aspects of mental health. Um, they also go into uh, classrooms and do presentations about like depression, anxiety, suicide, and how to talk to a friend who might be in distress. Okay. So you can actually, if you're staff at Chico State or faculty, I should say, faculty at Chico State, you can have someone come to your class. And Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I love you, that. You can email us um, and we can have students, one of some of our interns, come out and do a presentation in your classroom. And so our presentations can be anywhere from like a half an hour to an hour. Um, and really just kind of to figure out what you want your students to learn about. Um, we also um, recently have been doing some outreach off campus as well. So we've been taking mm. presentations and talking about suicide prevention um, to some local high schools. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fantastic idea. Absolutely. And are you getting well received at the high schools? Yes. Uh, we've only been at one high school so far. Oh, um, that's so all right. last year we were at Orville High School and we did a presentation there. Um, and then this year, um, actually on Monday, we're going to be speaking at Lynnhurst High School. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love that that you're doing that. So there's something else I wanted to ask you about, um, and that's rainbow suspenders. Yes. Can you tell me more about rainbow suspenders, yes. please? So I facilitate rainbow suspenders. It's a group um, at the counseling center. Um, for student clients. Um, and Rainbow Suspenders really is a support group primarily for queer identified students um, to have a safer space, um, a more confidential space to talk about some of the unique experiences of being a queer student here in Chico. And can any LGBTQ student go to Rainbow Suspenders? Absolutely. Um, we really wanted it to be a place where at any point of your identity development, if you um, are questioning, if you are just kind of like starting to learn more about your sexual identity, your gender identity, um, that this is a safe space to kind of explore that and to feel inclusive. And did you say this is a group or is this individual? It is a group. It is a group. Yes. Okay. And when do they meet? Um, Rainbow Suspenders meets every Thursday um, from three to four thirty. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. From three to four thirty. And where do they meet? We meet in the counseling center. So if a student is interested in coming to the group, they would come up to the counseling center, which is um, in the student services center, room four thirty. Um, they would talk to the front desk, let them know that they're interested in the Rainbow Suspenders group. The front desk administrators, who are super great. Um, will set them up with a brief consultation to meet with me. Okay. And that way they can talk to me because I run the group and they can see if this is something that is going to be a good fit for them. Awesome. That is a very awesome thing. And so we can get those details and we can put them up on the screen and so everyone can have the information. So again, if you're interested in Rainbow Suspenders, you just go to the Counseling Center yes. at Chico State. And that's for Chico State students? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. So um, what else about, is there anything else you want to tell us about You Matter or the counseling program or Rainbow Suspenders or yourself? The You Matter program is having some events come up this month. Um, we try to do things that are um, a little bit fun, a little bit interactive. We have an art showcase that's coming up at the end of the month, October 26th. Um, so students can submit art pieces, they can submit um, music, songs, anything that kind of um, speaks to resilience and mental health. Um, so that's going to be coming up. 
and um, rainbow suspenders is filling up. Um, we will keep it open for students because not everybody, you know, needs it right away. Mm -hmm. um, but it is filling up, so if you are interested, it's always recommended to come in ASAP. ASAP for mm -hmm. rainbow suspenders. Yep. Okay, and again, when is this art show? The art showcase is, I believe, October 26th. If you look on the U Matter website, um, which you can find through the County Center website, um, you'll see the dates of the art show. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter and Instagram and all the social media awesome. stuff. Awesome, awesome. And Rainbow Suspenders, do they have any kind of social media or is that you just go into the council? Rainbow Suspenders, because we want it to be a confidential group, doesn't have any kind of media. Yeah, I just wanted to check on that. Yeah. I really appreciate your coming in and telling us about You Matter and Rainbow Suspenders because we do have students out there that are watching this and I want them to know about the different things that they can get involved with or services that are available mm. for them. At. And I'm going to say thank you very much for coming in, Jess. I really appreciate your coming here and telling us about You Matter and about Rainbow Suspenders mm -hmm. and how students can get involved and the services that are available for them. Thank you for having me. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Susan. Okay, I've been Ramin with the Rainbow Review. And I'm Trevor Allen. Good night, guys. Take care. Thank you.